people, it's me, Ani, and my pronouns are she and her, and welcome back to my channel for a new recent reads video. The first book on this list is called The Evil Storms. For those who don't know, this book is a middle grade fantasy, and it's the third book in this series, and it's also one of my most anticipated releases of 2023, and it absolutely lived up to those expectations. I really, really enjoy this book. I rated it four stars because, first of all, the world building continues to be so magical and so immersive and absolutely so inventive. Second of all, the plot was so intriguing and absolutely so engaging. Third of all, the characters are so wonderful, so lovely, so well developed, and absolutely so distinct. I love these characters and their friendship so much because they each felt so individually well developed. I love Barclay and Tig and Viola. Literally, I love them so much. And I'm so excited to continue this series and read book four because this book was so good. However, with that said, this story overall on its own felt very transitional, if that makes any sense. Now I understand that the author plans to write seven books in this series. So since this book is book three out of seven, that makes sense because we are reaching like the middle of this overarching character plot arc, if that makes any sense. So anyway, overall, I rated this book four out of five stars. I really, really enjoyed it. And I'm so excited to continue this series. So with that said, I would definitely highly, highly recommend it. The next book on this list is called Izzy at the End of the World. And this book was another one of my most anticipated releases of the entire year. And it's a middle grade science fiction story following a young autistic bisexual main character as she tries to figure out why she's the only person here at the end of the world, if that makes any sense. Honestly, I like this book because first of all, the plot was very intriguing and engaging. The world building was very nice and awesome, although at times it was hard to understand, which I expected because that's why I tend to avoid science fiction most of the time. So I did expect that. So the world building wasn't as immersive as it could have been, but I expect that with this genre in general. Anyway, I digress. The characters were well developed and distinct and I really, really enjoyed their friendship and growing romance. The disability as well as the queer representation was very natural and very, very casual and really well done. Overall, I did really enjoy this book, but since overall, it wasn't as immersive as I really wanted it to be even though I expected it not to be because it's science fiction. Again, I don't really know if that makes any sense at all. I rated this book three out of five stars, but with that said, I would still highly recommend it because it is an awesome, solid book. So with that said, take that as you will. The next book on this list is called Whale Darkness Blooms. First of all, there was a trigger warning on this book for sexual assault. Second of all, this book is a YA paranormal thriller and it follows four perspectives in a town with a history of missing women as they try to investigate what really happened because they each have a personal stake in it because some of their moms went missing a few years ago. I enjoyed this book and I liked it, but I didn't completely love it. First of all, I will say the mystery was super captivating, which made the plot intriguing and engaging. Of the four main characters, half of them were distinct and well developed and the other half blended together. The sapphic sexuality representation in one of the main characters was so casual and so well developed and so well done so I really appreciated that. I love it when books have casual queer or POC or disability representation like that so that was really well done. But overall, for me, I didn't completely love this book. I would read another book by this author if she writes another one with like less character perspectives. You know what I mean? So anyway, overall, I rated this book three out of five stars. So take that as you will. The next book on this list is called If I Can Give You That. This story is a YA contemporary following a young transgender boy navigating a new romance, his estranged dad, and his depressed mom. This story is absolutely so good, so iconic, and absolutely so excellent. And I definitely understand why it's been marketed towards fans of Mason Devil and Case and Calendar. So basically, if you loved Felix Evil After and I wish you all the best, I would definitely highly recommend this book because it's so good. First of all, the conversations surrounding gender, sexuality, and mental health 
was so authentic and so well done. The plot was so engaging and so intriguing. The characters were so well developed and so distinct. The friendships were so lovely and so wonderful. The romance was so cute and so well paced. I love a good slow burn friends to lovers romance because this book was based on such like real chemistry and connection. Literally this book is so good and it's so awesome and it's so excellent and so well done. So anyway, all that to say, I clearly really, really enjoy this book and I rated it four out of five stars. And with that said, I would definitely highly, highly recommend it. The last book on this list and certainly not the least is called The Lucky List. This story is a YA contemporary following a young sapphic main character who's following her mom's senior year list three years after her mom has passed away. This story is absolutely so fantastic and it's so excellent. And I'm so glad that I have previously read She Gets the Girl last year because that means that I knew kind of what to expect from the writing because if you didn't know, She Gets the Girl is this YA sapphic contemporary that was very, very popular last year. And it's written by two people. And one of those two people wrote this book, if that makes any sense. So basically, anyway, I digress. This book was so good. It was absolutely so awesome. I've said this many times before, but I love stories that center on grief. And this story did it so well because it was so good and so emotional. The plot was so engaging and so intriguing. The characters were so well developed and so distinct. The family dynamics were so fantastic. The friendships were so lovely and so wonderful. Again, I love a good slow burn friends to lovers romance. The romance was so cute and so well done. Literally, the queer representation felt so authentic and so wonderful. Anyway, all that to say, I rated this book four out of five stars and I really, really enjoyed it. So with that said, I would highly, highly recommend it. So in conclusion, here are all a few of the books that I ended February with and started March with. If you watched my March TBR, you know that I have really high expectations for March as a reading month. I hope to read more in March than I did in February. In February, I ended up reading 27 books, which is pretty good but is less than I expected to read. So anyway, with that said, I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please don't hesitate to give it a big thumbs up and comment down below the pizza emoji if you made it all the way to the end of the video. Thanks for watching, subscribe to my channel if you're new, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.